and I do not live by instinct. We are driven by purposes, values and goals. We look at something and see beauty while the person next to us sees no beauty in it at all. Some things command the allegiance of our hearts, while other things barely get our attention. In the centre of this value system is our definition of success. Right. Oh, it's good to be back. Pretty got about five and a half kilometres underfoot already. And uh, just coming into this stream behind me here this time. So, central Rongarongas. It's just after Cyclone Gabriel as well. So, I think down here the Rivers look alright still, like you can see they've been sort of washed, washed out, but the main river you can tell has just come up and dropped, it's, and it's gone full width for the uh, Rongaronga Valley as well, which is pretty impressive, so, um, yeah. yeah, it's three days after the cyclone, so the weather's it's pretty good, it just definitely has that tropical feel to it still though, like, it's very humid, bush just was really really wet so for like middle of February to be tiptoeing through the bush quietly is pretty rare so um, but anyway we're gonna make our way right up to the top here tonight um, it's gonna be windy again I was hoping it wouldn't be I haven't been it's been a long time since I've been in the room of Tuckers and it wasn't windy so so yeah I'll get up there and see you up there wood here obviously with the winds blown off so it's actually a bit of sign it's not that fresh probably a couple of days old but it's right around here just chewing on this fallen whitey wood you know but really speaking this is perfect bush hunting because the ground is so soft now like I can walk very quietly through here quickly and the cicadas are going hard out. The river's going hard out. So, kind of good, real good bush, bush talking. Kind of a really good bush talking area through here. <laughs> this is where I shot my first ever public land stag was in here. First ever. Uh, there's about, there's, I call this place the Triangle and there was three stags in here going during the roar and I remember we uh, we dropped down off the ridge 
came through here. Beautiful open bush, you can see it's a long time, 40, 50 meters. And uh, we brought him in and I just remember, oh, that was the days that I never counted points. It was just, if a stag comes, you just shoot it. <laughs> and so I shot it uh, thinking, uh, this is a little bit of a scary part. I, I saw him properly and I identified him properly, but I thought he was an eight pointer. So I shot him, but it turns out he was a four. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, that was just probably 600 yards into the bush just before the ridge, just before the hillside starts to climb into the shingle. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of cool coming through here, but I ain't bush hunting with a 26 nozzler today. I want to get to the tops, so I'm, I'm a real terrain hunter and I love the open tops. And so I'm willing to work quite a bit harder to get to my animals that I actually I want to shoot them in a particular environment um, and so that's why I just walk past it. So I might wisen up one day <laughs> and start hunting the easy areas but for now I like it. <sighs> right. <sighs> just oh man, I just climbed up out of the riverbed. Made out onto a spur. Uh, probably sitting at about I don't know, 300 meters in altitude at the moment, so it's a really hard climb up there. What's encouraging though is down down in the, that triangle I was talking about, there's actually two different sets of footprints. So um, one was a sneaker, which is always a good sign because it usually means that bush bush stalking down through here, which is pretty plausible because it's pretty ex pretty easily accessible and it's, it's a really good spot so but while I've been coming up here there's lots of sticks and stuff and trees on the track from the cyclone and none of them have been moved <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I reckon no one's been up here since the cyclone they could have gone up the river which they probably won't shoot a deer that way anyway because that's not how this that's not how these valleys work the deer are just they're always looking down into the rivers, they know exactly where you are going to come from. So you got to get up onto the ridges, travel up high and shoot shoot down into them. So that's really encouraging. Hopefully there's um, been no one up here for, for a while. Right, our camp's probably at about 650 altitude. It's going to be really impossible to get out of the wind but yeah all right let's go so I've just been glassing this open basin here front of me for the last half an hour I picked up one goat <laughs> I just jumped out of the bush I just picked it up and I can't find it again but he's at about 550 yards but, uh, I shot two deer out of here before I guess I got the choice of like, do I carry on up? I know the wind's going to be really bad. Or do I swing the hammock here for the night and just glass right out through the evening? Kind of just hoping that something will pop out. Really too sure. Not really sure what I should do. It's like 20 past six. So there's about an hour of shootable light left. Oh, maybe an hour and a half. So we've expected something out right now. But nothing.
what is success? Is it judged by the size of a house? By the amount of stuff we own? Or is it judged by maybe our achievements? I don't want to live my life, look back and realise that I invested into things that really just don't matter. A lot of the things we chase and claim success, a lot of these things are temporal. They are of the physical world that are going to pass away one day. decided to carry on up and it's just going to be an uncomfortable night um, yeah I'll carry on up this nice area for a campsite I'll see if I can figure something out off we go I don't know if you can see that but this main river down there that's the main river it's a real long way up but uh can I carry on The wind died off as the evening came and turned out to be a really beautiful night on the top of the hill. Cool, so I've just broken camp down. I'm gonna head down this down the spur this morning into a it's a bit of a, a cliffy outlook which we'll, we'll jump onto and do some classing from there so into the to the top the head, very very top of the headwaters so yes it's a beautiful beautiful windstorm morning look at the trees above me they're just not moving, so it's pretty special because you don't get many mornings like this out here. So yeah, we're camped. I'm camped up at five, five seventy-five altitude, um, the very top. So the Rimatakas here are between seven, seven to eight hundred. So with Mount Matthews being nine forty-one, I believe, which is really tall for here. But you're basically climbing up from three or four meters above sea level with top thing with the river so well not maybe that low but quite low all right let's get the bag packed up and head for the hills Well, I'm at the top at the moment. I see the top's up behind me. So well and truly in the open now, but a few goats kicking around, but I haven't seen a deer yet. So I can hear a goat coming out of the stream right below me, so if I don't see any deer in the next half an hour, I'll be taking him out for dog food. The dog better appreciate it because it's a long way back home. Alright, 
time to do some glassing. After glassing the tops for quite some time and no deer seen, uh, it was time to set up and do a bit of conservation work and take out some goats. I spot these goats up at 425 yards. The 26 nozzler has never done any long range shooting so this is going to be a good bit of fun and a good test for the big 26 so I'm just going to get set up and get into it. At this distance the 26 Nosler is still pushing the 147 at 2600 feet per second. So that's about the same as a Creedmoor at the muzzle. The ELD match projectiles really start to shine down around 2500 feet per second or 2400 feet per second and that's when they actually start to exit properly. So for the 26 Nosler this is probably a little bit close but so we got a bit of a delayed kill of 43 seconds, but still did the job well. Go the 26 Nosler. This is me just waffling on about how confused I was that I missed. I didn't actually see the goat go into that bush and die there. Uh, the recoil management on, on a magnum like this is a little trickier. I thought that the projectile would be going fast enough to create hydrostatic shock, so I thought the animal would drop on the spot. But when I checked the ballistics chart later, um, it was below that magic 2600 feet per second number. So... Anyway, I waffle on, I'm trying to figure out, did I do anything wrong? I can't quite figure it out, but realised I actually did shoot the goat well, perfectly. When I looked at the footage, the bullet went right in the right place. A couple of minutes after I shoot, this nanny that I bumped into coming through the bush walked out into the open probably 120 yards away and just stood there and looked at me. I thought she's a much better candidate for dog food because she's a lot closer to get to. Man, my shooting is so rusty. <laughs> oh, that first shot, as soon as I pulled the trigger, I was like, ah, it's terrible. I think I basically shot her in the foot. Uh, so I got the second shot perfectly and sacked her, but that's just so bad. I need to do a lot more shooting, as you can tell. It's very, very rocky. Mind you, then again, I haven't had my morning coffee yet, so. Anyway, go bone her out. Bit of dog food.
scrubby. Hey, Bush lawyer. That's why I wear pants in the middle of summer. As I come back, looking, oh, I've been through a blender. All right. Oh, down this river is not not very pleasant. This has just started to open up now. I actually came a gut. A, a, I had a good fall as well. I ended up drenching myself. I stood on a rock and slipped backwards, but slipped down into a pool. I didn't realise, but it was actually like quite deep, <laughs> quite deep. Ended up sitting down in it accidentally. So yeah, once the river meets up with the other junction, um, should come a bit better, but it's pretty bad. Really a lot of waterfall sort of stuff, and yeah, I won't be coming up here again. Man. As a Christian, true success for me is resting in the finished work of God that happened with Jesus Christ on the cross. I have his forgiveness, I have his presence, I'm welcomed into his kingdom, I have a clean conscience, I have a pure heart, and these things will never be taken away from me, they will never pass away. One of the main reasons why I come out into this beautiful God created place is because my heart, probably just like your heart, it's all messed up with false successes, things that really just don't equate to anything. It's a question I ask myself every time I come out here trying to achieve success. I ask myself what kind of success is my heart hooked to at the moment and is that success shaping my decisions and my actions. I sincerely want anyone who's watching this to come to know God, come to know God through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, come to know him and truly understand success that starts in this life and in the eternal life to come. No deer seen at all. Um, but that's okay. I always try and learn something from a hunt. I wonder if, because of that uh, cyclone, I sort of tiptoed through a bit of bush on the way back, and there was quite a lot of fresh sign in there. So I wonder with the cyclone if it sort of pushed everything into the bush, apart from the goats. <laughs> I don't know, this is, like, look at the day, the day is just absolutely beautiful, so I would have just expected to see something out feeding, but nothing, but that's okay, I think next time, just because of the summer heat and things like that and the roar coming up, I want to start doing a bit of bush, bush hunting, um, I'll check out all the places that I kind of know that there's stags around and things like that. So, usually not out on the tops during the war. So, yeah, that will be my next hunt. I will see you on the next one.